Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Megan. For years, we were stuck in a rut, always complaining that nothing ever changed for us. And then we realized, if we wanted to improve our lives, we had to put in the work. Each week on this podcast, we'll get into an aspect of personal growth, relationships, or just life. Through our own experiences and guest interviews, we hope to inspire you to make your own positive changes. Welcome Welcome to to the the Fools in Love Podcast. Podcast. Today we're going to chat about money because one of the things we firmly believe is that both partners in a relationship should have a solid understanding of how they themselves view money, how their spouse views money, and ultimately that they both have working knowledge of the money that comes into and goes out of the household. Yeah, so this is clearly meant for people in a longer term relationship and marriages, not couples just starting out. Or couples who are not to the point of shared finances, homes, kids, and all the other stuff. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good episode for those people, even though they're not in that place yet. Because our goal is to provide you with some things to think about if you get to that place in the future. We believe that communication is always important in a relationship, and there's no exception in this topic either. Talking about money with your spouse doesn't have to be the worst thing ever. It just has to happen Often, openly, and with care. So let's jump right in, shall we? We shall. I think first things first, you want to figure out how each one of you individually views money. The idea of money can kind of set people back a little bit, but I think if you're coming into it with an open mind and understanding that you do have some baggage when it comes to money, because really... Where you got your ideals on it came from maybe your parents, maybe TV, maybe just an online Google search. But a lot of times it can come from a lot of different places. And so you want to first pinpoint where your overall view stands when it comes to finances. Right. And like you hear of couples where the woman spends and the man saves, and that's such a stereotype. And that may or may not ring true for you, but it is important to spend some time with yourself and figure out what are your beliefs about those money. Do you kind of go with that saving versus spending thing in your relationship? Or are you the opposite? Or are you somewhere in between? Yeah. So it's just getting a firm foundation of where you're at. So if you're both savers, that's great. If you're if you or your partner is more of a spender, that's fine, but it's something that where you need to talk about it because unfortunately it won't just work itself out. So if you don't have the conversation, it's going to add a lot of unneeded stress from where you're both coming from. Right. So just come in some of the things to think about when you're figuring out how you personally view money before you go to that couple area is just, do you tend personally to spend or save? Do you believe that living paycheck to paycheck is okay? Or do you want to work towards savings, retirement, or even wealth? And then just knowing your own thoughts and goals about money is a great place to start that whole conversation once it becomes a more of a group chat scenario. And then just like Brandon was saying earlier, do you believe the things that you believe because of how you grew up? And do you need to change or reject any previous beliefs? Or are you good with them? Do you like where you stand with money? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's just having an understanding about where you come at individually. And that goes not just money, but really any problem, like if or or really anything you're looking at. If you want to figure out how to interact with your partner when it comes to that, you first need to figure out where you're coming from individually and then come at it with your partner because otherwise it's just going to cause a lot of fighting, a lot of frustration for no reason at all. Mm, Taking that from very specific to very broad. I like it. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) So another thing that you should definitely think about and then have the conversation with is how does your spouse view money? And the easiest way we think to do that is just to ask them what they believe about money. Yeah, I mean, arguments often arise so simply because no one will actually have the conversation. And so if you sense some friction when it comes to your partner, just open it up, open up the dialogue, have a conversation about where you're both coming from, because chances are you just have, you could even be saying the same thing, but because you're coming from a different mindset, a different place, you don't really know where to end up. But like Meg said, the easiest thing to do is just have that conversation and figure out what the best way is to have it handled. And I would stress that you'd want to do this as early as possible. 
Like, I don't really believe that me and Megan had a lot of conversations about money before we ever got married. I mean, I think we had a very, very general term thought. And as I say it, I even laugh because it's like a very general term thought on where where we position ourselves when it came to money and where our thought process was when it came to money. But I think it's important long before marriage, when you're in a long-term relationship, to start having those conversations early and often because things will come up. You'll see how your partner's spending money. You'll see how they're doing things. If they're going on exuberant vacations all the time, if they're buying expensive shoes or purses all the time, if that's the lifestyle they want to have, then you need to understand that and you need to have those conversations early because it's only going to cause problems later if you don't do it now. Right. Those arguments often arise because there's just a difference of opinion in how money should be handled. So if you can just figure out how the two of you are wired and figure out how are we the same and how are we different in our money views, that's going to save you so much trouble down the line. Like Brandon was saying, we didn't really, I mean, number one, we were so dumb and young and broke that it probably didn't matter as much for us. But I mean, looking back, we really should have had way more conversations about how we would handle it. And thankfully, we were able to just kind of learn as we go. But it would have been nice had we had these conversations before we ever got married. Right. The fact is, it's I get why we didn't do it because it's not sexy. It's not something that you like want to talk about. It's not something you're like, yeah, let's go do this. Let's go talk about our finances, right. people. Hey, Brandon, can you tell me about your childhood and how that impacts your feelings about money right now? <laughs> right. But the idea is do it early, do it often. And really, if you're married now and if you find yourself listening to this episode and you still haven't had that conversation about finances... Do it today. Yeah, go ask them right now. Like, hey, where are you at with money? What do you what do you think we're doing right? What do you think we're doing wrong? And what are your overall views on this? And where can we go from here? Yeah, and you'll be surprised at how easy it is once you just start talking about it and opening up the conversation about it. You'll really be surprised at how much of a difference it makes too. Because a lot of times with me and Mag, I find that if we don't talk about it that often, then we're just like spending money. And then it's like at the at the end of the day, you look at the bank account, you're like, where did all our money go? And it's like, if you're not taking a chance to look, then you're going to be a little confused. Which actually brings us to the next thing we wanted to talk about, which was setting a budget together. Yeah. The simplest way to do this really is to just spend some time listing out all the things that you have to pay each month. And yes, it can be a little mind numbing, but yes, you need to do this because this is the first step for your budget. You obviously have to know what are the things that you need to spend money on and what are the things that you want money to have to spend on. So you're going to have to have an understanding of where it's all coming and where it's all going before you can possibly start and figuring out the best way to use it wisely. Right. So just practically speaking, I mean, we would recommend printing a few months of your bank statements to look over them and figure out, okay, what are all these charges? Where do they go? What what were they? And just taking an in-depth look just to see what you're doing if you have no idea. And some couples truly don't. Some couples have zero clue what they're actually spending money on at the end. And by the end of the month, they're like, where did our money go? And one or both has no idea. So the other thing is just to, along with that, gather your monthly bills, gather your pay stubs up, And then it's time to create your spreadsheet or use Mint or another software that can help you create that budget so that you have a place to jump off of and a place to refer back to once you've gotten all your homework done. Yeah, a piece of advice here too is be realistic with your budget. So don't say when you're filling out your budget that like your fun money is going to be like $50 or $100 when you know very well it's going to be much more than that. Like be realistic in where you're coming from and understand that if you're just because you're not putting it in on your budget, if you're still going to spend it, it's never going to work. Like you're going to have to figure out where you can realistically spend money, where you're going to have to save a little bit and sacrifice a little bit. But you need to be realistic. I know me and Mag have made that mistake early on in our marriage where We were like, well, you know, these are our monthly budget items, but these are items that, you know, they just came up and, you know, they're not all the time, so you can't really do it. But then month after month, something like that showed up. And so that tells you or should have told us that you need a little bit of a cushion in there as well, because it's not always going to match up perfectly. 
Life happens. You're going to have car trouble. You're going to have something to do with the house. You're going to have an added expense that you did not expect. And you need to make sure that you're adding a little cushion in your budget too. But just be realistic in those numbers because I don't think you're going to spend $50 at the grocery store and like $25 on gas in a month. Right. And you can write it down all you want to, but if that's not what truly happens in your life, hence printing out a few months of your bank statements to look at, then you're not helping yourself by setting an unrealistic budget. You need to you need to obviously set that time aside so you can decide what you're really looking at. And then, you know, if you are spending more than you can actually afford to spend, then that's where you really do have to take a look and see what can go and what can stay. And maybe you do need to take some time where your budget for entertainment is $50 a month. And that's totally fine as long as you actually stick to it. Right. And one more caution is when you fill out your budget, you can't do things just because you feel like you deserve them. Just because you feel like you've earned it because you've worked hard. Trust me, I don't mean this in any negative way. Me and Meg have both been there, but you you can't say, well, I worked hard all week, so I'm just going to ignore the budget and do this, that, or the other. Like You're going to have to be firm with your budget, have some self-discipline when it comes to it because it makes a big difference in the long run. But if you never stick to it, like Meg said, it's just a piece of paper. Ooh, that's really good because... I can think of a few times where we were like, oh, yeah, we deserve this. But, you know, 25 to 50 to $100 a week here easily becomes hundreds of dollars over the course of a month. And if you are not paying attention to that, you could get yourself into some trouble. Yeah, coupled with this, too, is is doing a check-in on your budget. Because I'm always amazed how many couples we talk to who one or the other of, in the couple just have no clue about their money sitch. They have no clue where they're coming from. And so it's like, in my mind, how do you even know you can go out and afford the target trip if there's no understanding on where the cash is coming from? Right. We definitely believe that both people should know what the bills are, know if they've been paid and what the balance in the bank account is. That's obviously our own opinion. And we've heard stories of a house or a car being repossessed. And the wife, for example, had no clue there was financial trouble of any kind. And it's just like shocking and we just don't ever want to be in that situation. So that's where our personal belief comes into play. There are so many couples that don't function like that, but that's just where we stand. Right. And the idea too is you know where you're coming from when it comes to money. And as you take these steps, you'll come to a realization on where you're at. Now you might find out that or you might know that you're not very good with money. And maybe that's why your partner is handling a lot more of it. But all we're saying is do what's best for you, but ultimately have some working knowledge of where you're coming from because you don't want to be in a place where something happens to your partner, heaven forbid, and you have no clue (laughs) where your finances are, what needs to be paid, where you're coming from. Hence the great need for like a budget, a spreadsheet, knowing where you're coming from, knowing where it is. Because The fact is, even if you're not looking at it all the time, you could go back and track it. And I would suggest doing like a monthly check-in. Oh, for sure. And I can't wait till we get a little bit further into this episode because we're actually going to tell you how we personally do all of this. Because if you're just starting out and you've never really been big on a budget, then you might be like, yeah, that's great. You guys are telling me to do a budget, but I don't know what you're talking about. So we will get to that just as an FYI. But another thing we wanted to just mention quickly is that you need to resolve financial disagreements with respect. If one of you wants to use your money one way and the other person disagrees, you're going to eventually have to talk about it and figure it out. Yeah. And I I would caution not to do that right in the moment. If it is a disagreement, if there is some friction there, but like Meg said, find a time to talk because especially when you're stressed or upset, it's not really the best time to start. You really need to start with a fresh slate and In this, you need to allow not only you, but your partner to give their thoughts without interruption. Because I know a lot of times there can be friction and there can be a lot of emotions when it comes to money, especially when we don't get things the way we want it. And so just being there, being respectful, having those disagreements, but understanding that you can come together and discuss them as a couple. Absolutely. And if you need to just take a break, just Both be willing to come back to the conversation later if you need to. It's not something that has to be solved this second. And I feel like sometimes we just get stuck into this 
thing where we all think that everything has to be solved right now, right now, right now, but we're not always in a mindset to be able to do that. So if you're not in a place where you can compromise, if you can think things through logically, if you can understand where the other person's coming from, come back later and do it when everyone's calm again. You got to think about what's best for you and for your family right now. So you need to try to look at it through your partner's lens. So rather than just looking at it like we often do, where you're just trying to win, you're just trying to win the argument, look at it from a more compassionate way and try to have some understanding of how your partner's looking at it as well. Because a lot of times they can have a different viewpoint than you. And if you don't ever give them a chance to hear them out, you're never really going to understand where they're coming from and sense their emotion. Right. Maybe the other person has a super valid point about why they believe that you should be doing this instead of that. And it has to do with the way your family's functioning right now. And maybe that isn't something that you need to hear and you're just not listening because you're so caught up with wanting to win. So just be aware that you might need to adjust and hear the other person out and actually consider what's best for all of you together, not just you as a person. All right. So let's get into some practical steps. So if you want the nitty gritty details of how we personally conquer our finances, we're going to share them with you right now. Okay, so we have two spreadsheets. Yes, we keep two spreadsheets all the time. And they could actually probably be combined, but for whatever reason, I like them separate. So the first one is our monthly household budget where we record our income, and then every line after that is a subtraction, so we know where we should be every month. So for instance, we record the mortgage, daycare, schools, groceries, utilities, cable and internet, all that stuff. And then at the end of it, We can see, obviously, if we spend all this money, are we going to be in the red or in the green? And this is really a great way to make sure that you aren't spending more than you make. If you put down all your bills and at the end your number is negative, you got to give some of your extra stuff up. Oh, that's right. I I so much love being in the green. I never like to be in the red. Oh, (laughs) and trust me, we spent a lot of years in the red, so I, I can respect that. But the other spreadsheet is one where we actually check stuff off of. So we print it each month and it shows our bills, the due date, and the amount. And it also has blanks for whether it's been paid and whether it's actually posted in the bank account. And what we're doing here is looking at this two to three days and marking off bills as we pay them and as we see them come out of the bank account. This way we can see what's coming up, what we should pay today, and we can ask each other if we've paid whatever bill it happens to be. But actually, Meg does this spreadsheet, but we actually both pay some of the bills right? share that responsibility. So we just find, again, going back to the thing that we both feel a strong desire to understand our money situation, we just feel like it's better for us personally to kind of split the responsibility of paying the bills. So... I do keep that second spreadsheet pretty much entirely on my own, although Brandon knows where it's at and could mark it off just as easily as I could. But it just helps me to keep track and make sure. But we both pay those bills. So Brandon, for instance, will pay the mortgage, the car, and several other monthly bills. And I pay more of the utility type bills. So the TV and internet, the water and the electric. And that just really helps us understand the bills we have and when they're due. And ultimately, if either of us fell off the planet today, the other could step right in, grab that spreadsheet, and get things paid, and there would be no disruption for our life, financially speaking, in that respect. Yeah, that's so right. And the most the most important thing we can say is you just need to communicate. And not only do you need to communicate, you need to communicate constantly about it. We always check in with each other about money and what we want to spend. We give each other a heads up even for small purchases. We review the budget often and make sure that it all makes sense with where we're coming from. And one thing is, I know that some people have differing opinions about the check-in of the money you want to spend. So I do know people where they'll be like, if it's over a certain dollar threshold, they'll check in. So some people will say, you know, if you, in our marriage, if it's over $200, then we have to check in and kind of make that decision together. And everything else is, you know able to be spent without really checking in. Brandon and I just kind of operate just out of just because we've always done it this way. Just any money that we really want to spend, we just kind of check in. It's not really a permission thing. And it's not like either one of us says no. It's just more of a common courtesy for us personally. That's just the way we like to do it. We don't have any specific dollar threshold, but you certainly could. And some people that functions really well for them. Yeah. And we decide together on the goals that we set as well, which I think is important. Like we look at goals like paying down debt or saving to buy something specific. 
And then we're both in the same mindset. In setting those goals, we really set ourselves up for success because we have something to work toward rather than if we didn't know where our money was coming from, where it was going, and say Meg handled all the bills, I would have no idea of how to even set a goal because I would have no basic working understanding of where we're coming from. Right. Or worse, you'd be setting the goal and I'd just be totally ignoring the goal because I'm not working towards the same thing you are. So it just depends on how you want to format that. But it's really a good idea to just be on the same page as your partner about the goals and the saving versus the spending seasons or anything like that. Right. And then we also, what we'll do is we'll set budgets for birthdays, Christmas, et cetera. And <laughs> but you never like to stick to your budget for birthdays and Christmas for me. No, I definitely don't. <laughs> I always got to one up you. But <laughs> and then we decide on bigger things like trips or, or not doing a trip altogether. We decide that together. So we take that time and we really look at everything and we come together in those moments. But the common thread in all those areas is just that we're communicating constantly and we're communicating consistently about our money. And we're not, I mean, it makes it sound like we only talk about money or something. That's not true. We we don't, but we do have a really solid understanding. And I think that that really works for us and probably would help a lot of people too to just be aware of how they're doing financially rather than just letting the other person take over all the time. So we really only know about keeping our money together, not separate. So we don't have separate accounts, only one account that everything goes into. And we know that there are couples out there who do things differently, where each person will have their own account and they'll pay certain bills. Some couples have a household account, but also have their own accounts. But for us, we got married broke and fresh out of college. So there was not exactly any money to keep uh, keep separate. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> right. So it just really is... A personal preference thing. And that's totally fine. One thing that I want to just share really quick is about what we do, that being said, about gifts and how to surprise each other, which seems like it would be an issue when you don't have any separate money, but it actually has never become an issue for us because we each have a credit card and we can use that when we want to do a little surprise thing. And we also have sometimes just basically said, hey, I need you to keep off the banking for a few days. I'll watch things. I'll pay the bills. But I need you to not log in to the bank account while I've got something going on for you. And you just trust that the other person's doing that because why would you want to ruin a surprise for yourself? And then as far as fun money goes, we just use the money that we have. I mean, if I want a pedicure or we want some new Spartans gear, we just buy it after a heads up. It's not an issue for us. We don't need to have a separate account for fun money. It's never come up ever in our marriage that we've needed separate fun money. So it's just been easy and simple. And I can totally see why some people would want their own, but it just hasn't become a thing for us. Yeah. The fact is talking about money is not fun. It's not sexy. It's not something that you probably want to do, but it is an important pillar of any relationship and an important pillar of any marriage. You need to understand where you're coming from and where you're paying money to in order to come to a place of what you can actually do with your money or if anything you're doing even makes sense. We believe that having a combined account is actually very helpful for us as a couple and both having a working knowledge, but we understand that people all do things differently. But the most important thing among all of it is just to have an open, honest communication about where you're coming from with your money, what your beliefs are and where they developed, and just setting yourself up for the future. And that's the best thing you can do in your relationship. Hey, B, what did you think of that episode? I think it was pretty dang good. Well, what should someone do if they enjoyed these last 30 minutes? They should probably head over and leave us a review so we can reach more people. They definitely should. Guys, if you like the Fools in Love podcast, please go follow us over on Instagram at Fools in Love Podcast. We'd love to connect with you and learn more about what you'd like to hear. 